What's up, guys? So, if you made it to this video, you probably clicked on it because you want to get your ex back. Or, you probably are in a situation where you want to get your ex back or, you know, maybe you're just watching it just for the knowledge. But before we get into this video, there are some disclaimers that we must make. For one, yes, when I say I guarantee you in this series, we're going to make it a three-part series video that you can certainly out of doubt, get your ex back if you follow these steps. For sure. Guarantee. God willing. Inshallah. You can for sure get your ex back. The first thing before we get into it, and there is a lot of explaining, and you guys need to understand and be patient. That, one, you have to understand that you are in control of your reality. One book that I would suggest to read, strongly suggest, you, if you, even if you don't like reading, you can listen to the audiobook, is As a Man Thinketh. That book really goes into how you are the author of your reality. You control your reality. And yet at the end of this, there are some techniques and methods that I will be explaining on how you control your reality. What this really causes for for a lot of people to take responsibility most people don't take responsibility for their life so most people don't understand that you are in control of your life right and once you come down to this understanding and you understand laws of the universe laws of your mind laws of you know just this world and how things work essentially you'll come to the understanding that you are responsible for your life right and before we get into this one thing you guys have to understand, getting your ex back is not always the proper deal. Getting your ex back is not always the thing that's right to do. I just want to make a disclaimer that if you had an ex that's just a horrible person, somebody who cheated on you, somebody, and you know, when it comes to getting girls and getting relationships, I have what's called a filtering mechanism. There's a series of steps, there's a series of qualities that you use to filter out a woman to determine whether she's going to be a wife or not. So if you don't have access to this, if you don't understand that, I suggest you get access to that. It's readily on Patreon. If you're not on Patreon, subscribe to Patreon. If you don't want to get on Patreon, book a call. And, and Patreon's cheaper. It's only $16 a month for the regular tier, right? But that's one step that you guys cannot forget. There's a lot of guys who are in long-term relationships with their girl and don't understand that they are with somebody and they just are who they are. And there's nothing you can do about it to change that person. And that is not the type of person that you want uh, that you can be with long-term because they are just not a person that is fit for maybe a person like you, even if you better yourself. Sometimes these people can just be still that way. Some, people, some women are very vindictive. Some men are very vindictive, right? Vice versa, whether you're dating, whether you're a woman dating a man or a man dating a woman, right? So that's one thing that I want to get into. Now, let's get into the business. <laughs> um, when it comes to breakups, one thing that I see often is usually the person that is getting dumped, uh, usually is the one that wants their ex back. Now, even if you did the dumping and you think or see that this person has moved on and you think and see that this person uh, is living a, long, uh, living a life, it doesn't matter. You can still have that person back. Yes, you can still have that person back. But focusing from the perspective, because for that person who did the dumping and they still want that person back, you're going to want to pay attention later on in the video. Now, for the person that uh, was dumped, which in most cases, somebody who separated from you, somebody who walked away from you, somebody who doesn't want to be with you. Um, and I understand that the emotions that you may be feeling, uh, what you may be going through is very adverse. Uh, it's very difficult to do. It's very hard to deal with. And... 
what you're going through isn't something that um, most people are able to deal with. But on this path, you're going to have to have patience. You have no choice because if you don't, you will ruin chances and you will make shit worse. I promise you. I speak to guys. I speak to about just about almost every month. I am talking to one guy or one guy books coaching that makes his situation worse. The only guys who see success from coaching are the guys who listen. You have to listen and you must take instructions and take notes because if you don't follow this process, you will make the situation worse. It is very crucial and very important. Now, if someone has pulled away from you or if someone does pull away from you, what the mistake that most men make, they start to panic, right? They start to get into the scarcity mindset and they believe that, oh, you know, if she doesn't, um, you know, if I don't, if I don't get her, if I don't chase her, uh, she's going to get with someone else. She's going to start talking to someone else. She's going to have, she's going to have sex with someone else. She's going to do. No, you know, even though that may be the case, it may not be the case. And a lot of times guys just panic because you, you with a perfectly good girl. If the girl's worth chasing more than likely, and if you filtered her out properly, right, before getting with her, most likely, you know, she only broke up with you even after a week. So although there are case studies where girls do move on a lot faster, but these are exceptional cases where, um, you know, a girl is uh she's with you for a while and things have changed in the relationship for a very long time and she's got over you in that relationship for a very long time and if you have any type of intuition any type of intelligence you can tell when that happens but one of the biggest mistakes that most men make is they start to panic they start to chase and what happens slowly after that they start to blow up that girl's phone they start to uh you know try to reason with her they try to logic with her um they they start to beg they start stalking, right? You blowing up her phone is not going to help. You trying to convince her that I can change. I can do things better. I can I can make things better for you. I can I can try harder. It's not going to work. You telling you trying to use logic like, "Oh, well, if you had this problem, well, I I can just fix it. I can fix it and we can work things out," right? And even if she takes you back for that second it's it's a part of her that kind of lost respect. And if even if she does take you back in a second, you have leveraged that relationship to where she may now take advantage of you. Uh, she may have less respect for you. She may be more turned off by you. A lot of things start to become transactional where it's like, oh, if you don't do this, I'm not going to be bothered with you. If you don't do this, I'm going to give you the silent treatment. If you don't do this, that threat of her leaving you is always still there. And she knows what can get your uh, your blood boiling, right? If you don't do this, I know what he doesn't like. He doesn't like the idea of me leaving. So what am I going to do? I'm going to, what? I'm just going to not talk to him. Because that idea of me leaving is the closest thing that I can come to is just ignoring him. So then he's going to think that, oh, you know, well, he doesn't give me what I want. I'm going to continue to do that. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. So... You cannot chase, you cannot beg. And one thing that you have to understand is if you came to this place, it has to deal with attraction. Doesn't matter what you say, her attraction for you is very low. So you begging, chasing, pleading, and blowing her up is not the thing to do. And you know, one thing, and that's how the controlling women do, right? If you have a girl who's she may not necessarily be controlling, but she may be a little aggressive sometimes. She may try to take the lead. She may battle and struggle with you on leading the relationship sometime. You know she can take advantage sometime. Now, if that girl is pulled away from you and you try to hit her up before she's ready to talk to you, you know what's going to happen? She's going to take advantage of you. She's going to start taking advantage of you. She's going to start controlling shit. She's going to start running shit. She's going to be even more controlling. Because if you already know she has inclinations of doing that beforehand, what do you think she's going to do when she knows she has leverage? And a lot of the times, not all the time, a lot of the times when women pull away, they're power plays. They are trying to test you to see 
how are you going to react? They're trying to test you to see if you're going to uh, uh, panic and you're going to chase them because it's probably something they've seen in the past. It's probably something that they were told. It's probably something they saw on YouTube or some probably some advice that they were given. Oh, if he really loves you, he's going to chase you. So uh, pull away from him and see what he does. And most men do fall for it. But even if that's not the case, even if she's genuinely done with you, and even, even if she genuinely wants to be done with you, um, you can still get her back. So either way, when she pulls back, you cannot run, you cannot chase, you cannot reason. You cannot do anything that is going to make her, uh, you know, want to be with you. It, there's You cannot... Because remember, it comes down to attraction. This person is seeing you at your lowest point. Even if she was a submissive girl, you know, with the submissive woman, if she's pulling back, right, and she was already on your on your board with you, listening to you because you were dominant, right? And now you're coming and begging. Now she's seeing you in a position of weakness. And you guys got to understand, you can't be so dominant in a relationship and then come back down with that submissive girl and think things are going to be the same. She's seeing you in a different light now. And now you start to become, uh, you know, you're showing weakness kind of, you're kind of being desperate and she's going to look at you in a way where it's like, yeah, I think I made it made the right choice because whereas before you weren't panicking, you weren't doing all these things. Um, now you're doing it. So whether the woman's controlling, whether she's submissive, you cannot, run and chase after her right you know a lot of men think when a female pulls away they think that you know that the woman wants them to try harder they think that the woman wants them all right that's a sign for them to show them that they love them right on a minor scale maybe right on a minor scale but like i said when a woman pulls away that's not cold for you to try harder. That's not cold for you to, oh, show her that you love her. Because a lot of times women play games. Sometimes women really mean it. But under any circumstances, when a woman pulls away, whether she's done with you for real, or whether she wants you to try harder, whether she's playing game, whether it's a power play or not, you chasing her is not going to end in your favor because I already said it. It's going to change the dynamic of your relationship if she's testing you. If she's really done with you, if she's really lost attraction, it's going to push her farther. So what do you need to do? You need to not chase. You need to not blow up. Do not make yourself look desperate. When you make yourself look desperate, it turns you off. You ever see somebody, you ever see a poor person in, in the street begging for money? What do you try to do? You try to avoid them. Right. Because these people are desperate. Most people avoid them. They still get money. Some people have pity on them. Right. You may have pity on the per poor person. So some may may give money or you may just try to avoid them altogether because they're begging. They come off as low energy, low vibration. And it's the same thing with your girl. She may have pity for you and get back with you for the minute. She's not going to stay with you. She may have, uh, you know. She, she or she just may start to avoid you even more. A poor person comes, keeps coming to you, begging them, and they come to your window. You know, you're not going to roll down. Most people don't roll down the window. They keep that shit up. Most people aren't like, there's always exceptions. Some people will, some women will say, okay, yeah, I feel bad. Let me, let's give him a chance. Let's try to work things out. Let's see if he can get his shit together, right? And, and, you know, so it might work in your favor right then and there. But in most cases, it's not going to work for you, Pops. It's not. So what you have to do is you have to not chase. It's going to make your situation worse. And this is why when she does do no contact, you need to mirror her energy. You have to mirror her energy. She does. You do too. Now, a lot of guys don't understand why no contact is necessary. And, it's, and, it, and it sucks I have to explain this, but I'm going to explain it again. That the guys who say, I don't want to have to play this game. Why can't I just have her back? It's not a fucking game. 
you're turning her off even more. You understand this? It's not a playing a game. You don't, that's not how this works. All the fairy tales, all the movies, all the TV shows, all the love movies. That's not, you don't chase them and, oh, and then they run back and everything's happily ever. That's not how that works. Yeah, like I said, there's always exceptions. There may be exceptional situations. But for 98% of situations, that is not how that works. And there's been studies done on this. And it's a correlation amongst all the countries. There's been studies done that men that are more responsive are less attractive. Meaning, oh, when she texts you, text right, right away. You call back right away. You're always there available. Because there's no scarcity on your time. So why no contact is needed? You know, whenever this person you're thinking about, they break up with you. You have to give them time and space because why? One, you need to give them time to miss you, right? You need to give them time to miss you. And, and you got to think about why they broke up with you in the first place. Why they broke up with you in the first place. Are you even trying to correct this behavior? Are you thinking about this behavior? No contact will get you very far and and another thing is you have to give this person time to miss you and this is where a lot of guys mess up because they chase and they try to do all this shit they try to do all this extra shit and beg and plead and pray but you're not giving this person time to miss you their attraction is low for you they're not turned on by you right now you're not going to get that by forcing it it's like a magnet right you know, opposites for child. If you're more positive, she's going to be more negative. Right? If she's more positive, you're going to be more negative. And if you're more relationship focused always, and, and I don't know why it's this way, but it usually tends to turn a lot of women off. It always goes that way. Now, there are always different situations. There's always exceptional situations. And I think just about every girl that I've ever loved has pulled away at one point. And I've gotten them all back. But I usually got him back with the last technique. And that's going to come in the third video when I tell you guys. But we got to go. We got to start at the beginning, right? Um, now, no contact. You have to give them time and space. You have to give them time to miss you. And another thing is uh, you cannot be her friend. And, and this is another big mistake guys make. Being her friend during the no contact phase doesn't work. Big no, no. Big, 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 big no, no. And why is this a no, no? Because what's happening is you're being satisfied with the breadcrumbs that she's giving you, right? You're being satisfied with the breadcrumbs that she's giving you. And what that's hap what's happening when she does that is it's giving you hope. And you're sticking around because you think that she's eventually going to give you back that relationship. You're thinking she's going to eventually, uh, you know, give you what you want. But when she tells you, let's just be friends, you don't sit around and wait for her. Because you're not showing that you have options. You're not putting any scarcity on your time. And then a lot of the times what, what some women do is they may take that time and use you as comfort to basically get over you because they don't want to be completely separated from you. They don't want to be completely separated from you and they don't want to, uh, you know, they don't want to, um, you know, have that idea of completely using, losing you. But maybe they kind of want to move on slowly and progressively and, and slowly move on from you. But when they do that, you have to separate yourself 100%. You can't allow her to use you to get over you. And you won't and you don't want to be satisfied with the breadcrumbs of her saying, oh, let's be friends. So if she says, let's be friends, you say, OK. And you stop texting, you stop calling. Now, if she does contact you, you respond extremely slow. I'm talking eight hours later, whole day later. You don't ignore her for a week at this point. You don't ignore her for two weeks. And sometimes this alone may make her attraction raise for you. Your, your journey might end right there. 
Why? Because she has to understand that if you cut me off, there is a difference. There is a difference between being with me and not being with me. So if she says, let's be friends, you say, okay, that's fine. Or you can say, no, nah, I'm good. I don't want to be friends. Uh, we've never had a friend type of relationship. I'm attracted to you. I want to be with you. I want to make love to you. Uh, I'll, I won't block you, but um, I won't follow you. But us being friends, no, I'm good. Or you can say, okay. And then don't talk to her. Whenever she hits you up, uh, sometimes you reply eight, 10 hours later, or you wait for her to double text you. Or if she calls, you don't answer. You call back the next day or 12 or 10 hours later. And she asks you, why are you being different? What do you mean by being different? We're friends. There's a difference between being friends and lovers. You're no longer my girlfriend. You're no longer somebody I'm pursuing because you cut that off. So you can't expect things to be the same. Now, from this premise, sometimes that might be enough. I've seen a lot of guys have success with this, with just that alone. Because your, your relationship is different. Everybody's circumstance is different. Everybody's circumstances who are breaking up is different. Right? So that alone might bring her back. So don't accept being friends. Especially with somebody who you don't want to be treated like in a friend way. Because if you get treated like a friend, she's going to treat you like a friend. And you'll fall into the friend zone. And that's the worst of after having somebody and then falling into the friend zone. And it's the same thing for, well, that's a step. One of the steps for guys I'm trying to get out of the friend zone, but that's just one step, right? Now, another thing that you ha guys have to understand is why you need to do, you need to go no contact is this person is seeing you lower than they ever seen you. Usually when you get with somebody, your attraction, their attraction for you is the highest. How they see you is very, is it very attractive. They're super interest, all right? Even if their interest peaked at a different point, now they are seeing you at your most unattractive state. They've seen you more unattractive than ever. Their attraction is completely died out. And because of this, you need to and you have to take space. And and from and from understanding this position, you understand that chasing them and panicking and doing all of this shit is not gonna work. It's not. It's not. It's not because they're not they're not attracted to you at this point. And it's okay. Attraction dies. It happens. You can ramp it back up and we're going to get to that. You can ramp it back up. That's easy. You can do that. That's not hard. But what you have to understand, this person is seeing you as non-attractive. You need to take space. You need to take a step back. You need to regroup. You need to understand what's going on and start working on yourself and working on fixing all the issues that's been going on. And it always starts with you. All right. Now. Understanding that. Sticking around when you stick around is only going to make things worse and you're only going to push this person even further. So sticking around is not the right thing to do. You cannot stick around. You cannot you cannot stick around. You begging is going to push them further. And you're going to make that fucking situation worse. You're going to make that situation worse. And when you make that situation worse, this makes your situation a lot harder to reattract this person. This makes your situation a lot harder to make this person want to be with you. It makes things difficult. Very, very difficult. So this is not something you want to do. You do not want to stick around. And in fact, the very thing to say when they uh, say that they want space or they want to break up, you say, you know what? I respect. And this is key. I've, I've said this to so many men and hundreds, maybe even thousands at this point have used this to have success. I understand. I respect your decision. I love you and I will leave you alone. Because you saying that I respect your decision and I'm going to honor what you're saying and I'm not going to chase you, sometimes that alone. Fuck everything. If you say that alone, it's a psychology. It's a, it's a, it's a psychology hack. Why? Because they're going to be like, holy shit, wait, you don't care? So you're not going to chase me? That'll filter out whether they're playing games or not. But if they're serious, 
that might serve on their mind. That may make them double question things or, you know, question shit like, damn, that was kind of quick. You're just going to walk away from me like that. Um, that may make them do that. But you have to say that you can't stick around because I promise you, you're going to make things worse. Now, one of the worst things that you can do, it doesn't always hurt, but one of the worst things that you can do is crying. You think, and I know a lot of guys do this. You think that crying, you think that, <laughs> you think that crying and being sad and having low energy, uh, you think that um, these things are going to get her back. It's not. It's not. You think that being sad and telling her how much you miss her, telling how much you love her, it's going to get her back. It's not. It's only going to make things worse, I promise you. I promise you. And if you get sad, if you get down, if you cry, right? That's okay. But do it in private. And this is why no contact protects you. You can cry. You can do all that shit by yourself. Go in your fucking bathroom. Go into your bed and cry. I don't care. But you don't let her see it. It's a level of weakness. Well, so many women say, I don't care if a guy cries. I don't care. I like it. It's a turn on. Maybe for certain women and a very small percentage of women, it might be okay. But what I see with most guys who book consultations, they cry. Especially if they're continuously crying. Shortly after that woman's starting to lose respect and they're gone. You don't need to be posting sad stuff. You don't need to be posting sad songs. You don't need to be posting, oh, you know, when when she did this and now you miss it. And now you want her back. You don't need to be pusher, posting Usher Raymond uh, throwback. You don't need to be posting all these sads. No. 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 Because now they know, oh, yeah, he's sad. He's feeling it. I know he's feeling it because even if she's not looking at your story, she may be looking at your story from somebody else's account or she may be looking at it from a, a, a fake account or a burner account, whatever you want to call it. So what you have to understand is no posting sad stuff, no doing sad stuff, no sad calls, no giving in saying, oh, you know what? F what KB saying, I'm a caller. OK, you call her. See if that helps. You cannot you cannot fix it that way. I've been through so many of these situations to understand when somebody doesn't want you, you're not going to get them back by crying, begging and pleading. It doesn't work. No contact protects you. And, and honestly, if you're going to cry, it's OK to cry sometimes. It actually is because you need to get that shit out. You know, last girl that pulled away from me, I, I tried to cry. I really did. It didn't. Nothing came out. <laughs> swear to God, nothing, nothing came out. Because I feed myself so many positive affirmations and I was just like, she'd be back. They always come back. And I literally, I was playing sad songs, trying to cry. My eyes even watered up a bit. I was like, here it comes. Because honestly, sometimes when you cry, it feels good after. It's like a good release. Don't let nobody see that shit. I don't care if you got go to go drive to the top of a mountain, drive in an empty parking lot and turn the lights off and cry. Even if the police pull up on you, that's okay. They, 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 you good? Yeah, my girl broke up. They, they'll let you go. They ain't gonna go tell you, girl. They ain't gonna put it on the news and uh, put it on the internet. Put it on Twitter. Oh, look at this. Look at this funky monkey crying. <laughs> you know, they're not gonna do that. As long as she doesn't know. Don't be posting no sad stuff. Don't be posting all this, all this nonsense. You have to go no contact. <laughs> Especially when she put you have to go no contact. There's even scientific reasons. There's psychology reasons as to why going no contact is super important. We're going to end this video up here. This is for the introduction, right? For getting your girl back. This is phase one. If you do this properly, I promise you, you are on the right step. You, want, you are in the direction of the right place to getting your girl back. It's not an easy road. But if you are patient, I promise you, I promise you, I give you my word. If you are pray, if you are patient and persistent, 
and stay consistent in the things I tell you, you can get her back. Moving on is always the best option. It always is because there's so many other options out there. It's always the best option. But and I get it. Sometimes you really love this person. Sometimes you really want to be with this person. And you think that they're worth it. I understand that. I get that. Totally down with that. I've been there plenty of times. Even in recent years. But if you stay patient, if you stay consistent, I guarantee you, if you believe in the process, you won't miss. Every guy who's wanted their girl back and did what I told them, well, especially this last part is a new. You know, this is the last part when we get to it, this is something that I've been doing that, that I haven't really told a lot of people. And I realized that I've been doing it and I only get there when it's like, I feel like no other worldly tactics or techniques are gonna work. So, yeah. Tune in for the second and third video. Well, the third video is gonna be a little harder to access. But tune in for the second and third video and I will teach you guys how to, with certainty, get your ex back.